Hello there. Um, welcome to my little tutorial about um, setting up an Android project that makes use of Clojure. Um, we'll be using a Lining and plugin for this, which is called Line Droid. And well, I just in in this part, I'm just going to show how to set up the project and make it work in your REPL. Um, okay, so let's start right away. Um, actually, when you go to the GitHub page of Line uh, Droid. There is a link to a basic tutorial for getting started. And we'll just follow this tutorial. And, well, actually, this one here. Um, it's not too complicated. It's uh, just a few steps that we have to do to make um, the closure stuff work on Android. And, yeah. First of all, you should have JDK 1.7. According to this documentation, neither 1.6 uh, or 1.8 are working as of now, so maybe you want to check your Java version. Um, Okay, so, um, well, there are some f uh, few other uh, dependencies that you will have to install beforehand. Of course, uh, the Android SDK, um, the build tools, and the support repository. So, chances are, when, when you've installed Android uh, Studio, then um, you should also have all of these already installed. And when, uh, in case you're on a Unix system, you will have them in your home directory usually, well, that's the default, and the path to the SDK is your home slash Android slash SDK. And we'll use this to tell our Liningen where to find um, where to find our Android SDK. Okay, so let's get started. Setting up Cedar, is n we will cover this as well uh, in this video, but not right now. Um, let's start with creating a project. So, what you're going to do is say Liningen new for new project, and then we're going to say Droid, because that's the template we're using. It's a line dro uh, Droid template. Um, and then we we'll say uh, let's say droid test and some kind of you have to provide some kind of package name which is the Java package that you want to use um, as a base package for your for your application like for exam example say um, lambda startup dot droid test like this. And there are also optional arguments like listed in this tutorial, but I will just fire this command and uh, we're going to we're going to uh, adjust the other op options in the project CLG file. So when you start this the first time, then you will have a lot of uh, downloads there for your Maven repository. For me it's just the lining template. Um, Okay, so now we're going to have a droid test directory and within this directory we'll see, let's have a look, quite a few files already, an Android manifest, um, resources, like usual when, when, you, when you start an Android project uh, from Android Studio then you have quite similar resources and of course the source files. And these are divided into closure files and Java files. So in case you have some Java um, source code, um, you can integrate this already into this project layout. Okay, so now I have a look at the project CLG, the CLJ, and there are a lot of, well, if you were familiar with the lining and then you should 
not be surprised about this stuff here. For example, you can find the source files, uh, the source paths uh, defined here for Java and for Clojure. There are some Java compiler options here, uh, plugins and dependencies. Um, actually, this um, this line droid stuff here doesn't use the um, official Clojure compiler, but it uses a compiler called Scummit, which is uh, which is producing more efficient closure code or smaller closure code that is uh, quite beneficial on an Android device because otherwise the startup times and uh, it's uh, are taking quite long. Okay, so then you have defined a few profiles here and for example it uh, or the dev profile is inheriting um, or extending the, the Android common and Android user profile that you probably don't have uh, um, yet. Then it's integrating into the dev the um, REPL and there are some other some more options here and then there's another a re release profile that has some kind of different options in the dev and there are some Android uh, options defined, like for example some kind of memory stuff for the JVM and uh, this one is important, this, is, this one is going uh, we're going to change this one to the SDK version that I've installed on my uh, computer which is not, uh, which is 22 right at the moment Okay, so far so good. Another thing we've got to do, like our example told us, or you could do this uh, right here, like you like you can see um, there's a line telling um, the lining and plugin where the Android SDK is installed, but since this is rather static, I prefer defining it in my lining and profiles CLJ file where I have my usual environment configured and here you can see I've defined for for one the Android common profile and within that the Android keyword defining the SDK path so that should be always present when when your using the Android common pro, uh, profile, which is the case as we've seen in the project CLJ. And I've defined the Android user profile telling um, dependencies or defining dependencies which are for my case just the sitter and REPL because I'm going to use Emacs or I'm going to connect my Emacs to, to the REPL so if you're using Emacs you should probably define this as well and then you have to make sure of course that your Emacs uh, has the same version of uh, Cedar installed okay so yeah and then um, well going hand in hand with that is to exclude the Cedar namespaces from ahead of, ahead of time compilation so we don't want these to be ahead of time compiled we just want to use them like well I, I guess uh, usual closure code okay so I think that's it already um, let's quit and now within this directory you can do the following line droid do all which includes no, that's wrong because we have to do one thing before that. <laughs> um, you can now go to your Android SDK and there you will find a tools directory and within that tools directory you are going to find a Android binary or script or whatever it is. Let's see. 
it's a it's a script okay so however this is responsible you can call this for starting the um, emulator let's call help maybe you're already familiar with this but um, usually when when using Android Studio you won't have uh, to do this manually from the command line but you're usually going to uh, start your project by clicking on some kind of button or something in uh, in your Android Studio IDE so I'm showing this command line stuff here um, actually what we want to do is we want to start the AVD the Android Virtual Device Manager so we're calling this Android script in the tools directory with the parameter AVD and it's going to take a moment and uh, as we can see I'm going to hide this window I have two devices configured here, two virtual devices and I'm going to start the Nexus 5 one um, just click start just click launch and then it's going to take a second like you're used to well actually due to the virtualization acceleration it's quite quite fast not like a few years before so it's already up and running great you have your virtual device now running I pull this over here and now we can do this line droid do all within our project directory and this do all uh, shortcut here is a meta target which includes building the application um, building the APK package um, installing it on the device and starting a REPL and forwarding a port on your local host to that REPL on this virtual device so we are going to see a few lines of code here or compilation messages there some, will be some warnings which I'm not sure if they are in some way or other a problem or not some kind of reflection warnings okay so a lot of compilation creating a DEX file which is well, I don't know actually <laughs> what this actually does in detail yet I've not read through the documentation yet and then you will see it's going to build the APK and uh, install it on on the device okay so installing APK and now we're going to see the application will be popping up in, in a second yeah so let's draw a test and there's our application running and um, this command tells us now it is forwarding port 9999 to our local port 9999 okay so this first of all this application does nothing more than when you type in stuff and then click the button it's going to display a toast with the input that you've been typing okay so now you have first of all you could do line droid REPL which will connect you to the REPL now you're within that um, REPL which is running on that device but actually that's not too convenient for me because I'm used to using Emacs and when I edit my source code files then then I'd like to to use my Emacs to um, push the changes onto the device or evaluate them in the REPL so first of all let's say sitter connect localhost port 9999 as we've seen and then the REPL is coming up well actually um, I'm not sure I've been wondering about this warning here there's some some commands that the REPL on the device seems to not support but actually uh, I think um, the stuff is working um, and by the way I'm just trying to open 
a source file, a closure source file, which is this main CLJ file. And here we see a lot of stuff. For uh, well the first method here, or first function is a is the is the function that is displaying this toast here. So that's just for for demonstration purpose. Um, alter the message that we're displaying. So let's just append the string that we've typed with yeah in the end. So I've saved. I've not yet compiled it so we still have the old version here without the yay. And now when I um, compile this form it seems to be successful because and uh, in the Emacs tells us it's evaluating to um, the function. And now when I touch it, yeah. So, well, let's think about it. It's really nice because you won't have to restart. Well, first of all, you don't have to restart the emulator, but um, you don't have to do that when, when you're working in Java, neither. Um, but you don't even have to restart the application or reinstall it. So that's a cool thing because um, yeah, actually you can just edit your code like just like you're used to uh, when writing your closure applications, your native closure ap applications that don't have anything to do with Android. And yeah, okay, so. I haven't been uh, going through this. Obviously, you can even define uh, activities here in that closure code, but I haven't looked into that very much yet. Um, so that's it for now for just a demonstration for how to set up this project with Line Droid. Get your emulator running and your application in that emulator, and then interactively develop your application while having a REPL open on your device and being able to change code on the fly. Thanks for watching!